Lincoln rises proudly from the Fenland. The old town stands 200 feet high on a limestone ridge that runs south to north, cut through by the river Witham, and commands extensive views. There was an Iron Age settlement here before the Romans arrived soon after AD 43, but we owe it to the Normans and William the Conqueror who started building this magnificent cathedral that originally covered a huge diocese stretching from the Humber down to the Thames. Now this shot of the west front of Lincoln Cathedral, this was taken a few years ago, but on my last visit it was under extensive restoration. It survived the earthquake of 1185, but the rest of the cathedral did not. A year later, Bishop Hugh came to Lincoln and raised money for a cathedral in the new Gothic style. The new building was built from the east, finally joining up with the Norman West Front, which was enlarged, its doorways made to resemble entrances to heaven. Hugh died in 1200, but the work carried on. Unfortunately, the central tower collapsed in 1237 and had to be rebuilt. Hugh is buried within the cathedral. Miracles were experienced, and he became a cult, so the east end was extended to accommodate his growing fame. The Pope made him a saint in 1220, and the choir is named after him. When entering for photography, the first thing I check are numbers, that is, how many people already there. Early morning is a good time for a clear shot down the nave, surely the most traditional aspect of any church interior. On a recent visit to Lincoln, the chairs were removed, creating an entirely different atmosphere. I commenced shooting at 200 ISO, but as this was giving me shutter speeds of around what six of a second, I decided to increase it to 400 for hand holding. Whether you choose to use a tripod or handhold, there is an overriding temptation to point the camera up from horizontal for the roof. With any camera, unless you are using one of those specialist lenses that correct this, which is unlikely, the photographer will experience an optical distortion known as converging verticals, where uprights lean in and it's something the eye does not see. This can be very effective when pointing the camera up if the floor is not shown. Provided the amount of convergence is not too much, this can be corrected in Lightroom or Photoshop. When composing a photograph, allow plenty of room around the image because during post-production correction, part of the image is lost. For YouTube, I do more than this. I normally shoot 4x3 ratio, but 16 times 9 looks best on YouTube. Therefore, I can lose much of the image through cropping before I start to correct converging verticals. You certainly have to point the camera up for the bishop's eye a stained glass window installed around 1330. But as the floor is not in view, converging verticals look okay. To reduce the impact of converging verticals when taking the picture, use a telephoto optic and stand further back. This reduces the angle of tilt and is easier to correct in Lightroom. When using a telephoto, camera shake can increase, so use a tripod or a sophisticated image stabilizer, which I did with the help of the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and of course the much acclaimed 12 to 100 Pro lens. There is more to this window than the casual eye sees, even that of a photographer. Churches are built in the shape of a cross the transept acting as the bar across. At Lincoln, 
two circular windows face each other across the transept. The bishop's eye faces south, welcoming the sun into the cathedral, but the other, the dean's eye, is in the north transept and intended to keep out the dark deeds of the devil. Look closely at the bishop's eye. It is made up of glass from an older window. Do you see two large leaves and countless smaller ones? It is incredible to think that these windows were constructed without machines. The master craftsman literally improvising by making things fit as they went along. We move into St. Hugh's Choir, a church within a church. Here there are two technical issues, depth of field and a high dynamic range. In confined spaces where the composition demands the foreground to be sharp, Micro Four Thirds scores over its many rival formats because of its depth of field capabilities. This may not be a problem if you use a tripod, which may not be permitted, but with this handheld image everything is still sharp at f4, the wide aperture allowing me to use a shutter speed that I can hand hold. This is assisted by a bit of traditional technology, the hyperfocal distance. That requires manually focusing oh, about one third into the image, but not the background organ casing. This is because depth of field extends twice as much behind the focus point as in front, therefore bringing the foreground into sharp focus, which would not happen if autofocus selects the background. The use of a wide angle lens here, 12 mm, that is 24 in film, has helped because wide angle lenses give more depth of field than lenses of a higher focal length, such as standard or telephoto, a prime or zoom. The dynamic range of this shot is not too much of an issue, but point the camera the other way and achieving a correct exposure moves up a notch or two. Leaving aside HDR, which I have never found the ideal answer, because of the much brighter Great East window you must underexpose. Depending on how good or recent your camera, the devil is noise. Correct exposure, and especially exposing to the right, will render the window so overexposed that correction in post-production becomes almost impossible, a technical fault far worse than noise. I show before and after in Lightroom. On the before shot, I spot meter near the window, and here a camera with an electronic finder gives better guidance than optical. It takes a bit of practice finding the correct exposure. It is like walking a tightrope between noise and blown out highlights. Before we leave the choir, here a symmetrical composition works perfectly, reflecting the skills of the master craftsmen and masons. The Angel Choir was added to the cathedral to house the shrine of St. Hugh, who had become something of a cult figure, attracting many worshippers. The other famous incumbent of a sort is the Lincoln Imp, but you will need sharp eyes to find him. I only had the 12 to 100 Pro lens, not powerful enough to get in really close. This is full telephoto, and here is the same image cropped, indisputable testimony to the excellence of both image stabilizers in camera and lens. The origin of the imp is unclear, but one bit of folklore states that he was a bit of a devil amongst the angels, so they turned him into stone where he remains to this day. 
The final part of our photographic tour is to leave the main church and make for the chapter house via the cloisters. This is where the clergy met to discuss business, but first they listened to a chapter from the Bible, which reputedly is how the building got its name. This is one area of the cathedral where I felt the 12 to 100 Pro lens was unable to respond to the unique architectural characteristics of this building. Far better would have been the 7 to 14 Pro or the 8 mm fisheye. Ah oh well, perhaps another time. Before leaving, a chance to view the nave again, to see how many people, even photographers, are still present. For the whole shoot, I used the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II plus the 12-100 Pro lens, but nothing else. This covered 95% of situations, an ideal combination for travelling with kit of the highest quality. I only found a restriction in the chapter house, where I wish for the 7-14 Pro lens. My general approach was to keep it simple and not get bogged down by computerised technology. Instead, I used my eyes, using traditional techniques that have been around far longer and still pass the test of time.